Let's talk about the concrete equations as far as boosting is concerned. So in the previous lecture, we have been talking about a concrete example, a concrete illustration of how boosting algorithm works. The basic principle is that we keep combining weak learners and we are going to denote these weak learners with Ajax. So each learner knows just a little fraction of the space. What does it mean exactly? This is what we have been talking about in the previous lecture. That for example, the first Ajax classifier is able to separate these yellow dots from the green dots. So it knows this region of the space. The next Ajax weak learner knows another region of the space. Basically, it knows how to separate this yellow dot from all the other green dots. Okay, then the next weak learner knows this region of the space, which means that it knows how to separate this yellow dot from all the green dots. So the final capital Ajax model, which is a strong classifier, is equals to the sum of weak learners. Okay, we use some alpha parameters in order to be able to control these Ajax weak learners. So if alpha i equals to zero, it means that we don't care about age sub i x weak learner. If alpha sub i is equals to one, it means that this age sub i x weak learner is an important classifier. And of course, we have to use this sine function, which is plus one if x is greater than zero and minus one if x is smaller than zero. You may pose the question that why is it good? Because usually we are not dealing with colors as labels. So we don't have yellow color and green color. We have plus one and minus one labels instead. Okay, so we can assign a plus one and a minus one for the output classes instead of yellow and green. And that's why this sign function can prove to be very important because it is going to return either plus one or minus one such as the output classes. Okay, so this is the final formula we have to use, that the strong classifier capital Ajax is equals to the sum of the weak learners, and we have to use some alpha parameters in order to control these weak learners. Okay, then we are going to have the weight parameters. This is what we have been discussing as well, that we are going to assign a W weight parameter to every single sample in the data set because we would like to make sure that boosting algorithm will know that what are the important samples. So for example, in this iteration, boosting algorithm will increase the W weight parameter for this misclassified item. And why is it good? Because in the next iteration, boosting will know that this is the important sample. So it is going to classify this sample and it is not going to bother with all the other samples with lower W weight parameters. So this is why we have to assign a W weight parameter to every single sample in the data set. Okay, so it is extremely important to see that alpha parameters have something to do with the Ajax weak learners. We are going to assign an alpha parameter to every single weak learner and we are going to assign a W weight parameter to every single sample in the data set. Of course, at the beginning, we are going to initialize all the W parameters with one divided by N. Okay, another important fact is that we have to make sure that the sum of these WI weight parameters is equals to one. So we make sure that this is a distribution. Okay. Then we are able to calculate the error, which is going to be the sum of W edge weights as far as the misclassified data points are concerned. Okay, so for example, in the first iteration, there are two misclassified yellow dots. So basically, we just have to get the W weight parameter of this item, the W weight parameter of this item, and the sum of the weight parameters of the misclassified items is going to yield the error rate. Okay, so the error is equals to the sum of W sub i as far as the misclassified data samples are concerned. 
Okay, so the algorithm is rather simple. We have to initialize the weights at the beginning. This is what we have been discussing, that we don't know what are the important samples and not that important samples. So that's why every single sample in the data set will have the W value 1 divided by N, where N is the number of samples in the original data set. Then we have to pick an age X weak learner that minimizes the error term. So the error is equals to the sum of the weights as far as the misclassified items are concerned. And we have to pick this age X weak learner with the smallest error term. Okay. If we have this error term, we are able to calculate the alpha, and this is the formula we have to use. Alpha sub t, so alpha in the t iteration, is equals to 1 divided by 2, logarithm of 1 minus the error term, divided by the error term. You may pose the question that why do we have to use this t indices? Because these are the values in the t iteration. So we have to calculate the alpha, then we have to update the W weight parameters. What extremely important that this alpha has something to do with the age x weak learner. So this is the coefficient right next to the age x weak learner, and the W weight has something to do with the samples in the data set. And this is the formula we have to use. We are going to talk about it in the coming lectures. What's very important that on every iteration, we add a new age x weak learner to the final model. This is exactly what we have been discussing in a previous lecture. In the first iteration, we use the first age x weak learner. Then in the next iteration, we have another weak learner. Then in the next iteration, we have another weak learner. And finally, we have to combine these weak classifiers in order to end up with a strong classification algorithm. Okay, so basically we just have to use some iteration in order to update the error value, the alpha value, and the weight value. This is what we are going to talk about in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.